Hi, I'm Tom Salt, a medical doctor and functional medicine practitioner with Just Be Well. And I want to show you this vibrant wellness tick-borne panel. This is the most comprehensive tick-borne disease panel available today. So first of all, Vibrant Wellness uses a silicone chip technology, which essentially automates the process. You know, um, part of the problem with labs is human interpretation. And by having a machine do it, the machine doesn't get tired. The machine really doesn't make mistakes. If it makes a mistake, it's a catastrophic mistake that the human supervisor finds very readily. So um, it is a platform, a brand new platform using much more sensitive technologies. They use um, basically two different technologies. They use um, serology, this uh, silicone chip serology technology, and then they also use PCR. So silicone chip serology is really looking for your body's immune reaction. So we look for antibodies to specific antigens. So think of a lock and a key. An antibody is a key and an antigen is a lock, right? And they fit together. Um, and so it looks for both IgG antibodies and IgM antibodies. And then it looks for DNA of the bacteria. So PCR looks for the DNA of the bacteria. And so that's a direct test to see if we can find the bacterium in your body. The serology is an indirect test looking for your immune system's response. And we need to do both because you may have immune suppression and you won't mount an immune response, but you, we find it in your blood with DNA or in some tissue sample with DNA. So we use both. <clears throat> and there are other tests we use as well, but I'm today just going over this vibrant wellness Tick-borne 2.0 panel. Now, interpretation of the results. This first panel here is just how do you interpret this thing? And it tells us that things that are green are in the control range, they're normal. Things that are yellow are moderately abnormal and things that are red are high risk. And then uh, that's for the serology and for the PCR, if it's detected, it'll be in red, which means that they found the DNA of the bug. And if it's not detected, it'll be in green. Now down here a little further, it tells you how they make the interpretation. So there's an interpretation based on CDC and uh, Infectious Disease Society of America criteria. And then there is um, what we call an, an, interpret an interpretation based on um, alternative um, ideas. And these are based on an, in, uh, an internal validation studies, okay? And they, they tell you how to make this interpretation for both uh, IgG and IgM. Now, having said that, you don't need to read this because it's very obvious on the um, report, which is positive, which is negative. It goes on to tell you about their platform and so on and so forth. So here is the summary. So the summary is everything that was actually found to be positive on the entire test. So here we found some Lyme disease positivities, uh, four different species of Borrelia in this case. We found Bartonella to be positive and we found uh, cytomegalovirus to be positive. Now, how were they found positive? Well, you know, under serology, the IgG for these specific spots, so P28, P30, P34, um, and crude extract 297 and, and all the, everything in between, these are all specific antigens or parts of the bug, or in the case of the crude extract, the whole bug. Um, but all everything in this column is an IgG serology. Anything in this column is IgM. So we look for a multitude of parts of the all these bacteria, um, Bartonella here, and we found some IgG and some IgM and a PCR that was positive. And then cytomegalovirus, just the serology. So again, serology is your body's immune system responding to the bug. PCR is looking for the DNA of the bacteria or virus or whatever it is. And so this is a direct test. PCR is directly measuring the presence of the bug. Serology is measuring your body's response to the bug. So then we go down here to the Borrelia burgdorferi species specifically. This is the classical 
um, bacterium spirochete that is known to cause Lyme disease. We look for a whole bunch of parts. These are all various antigens. And again, green, like this one here, the C6 peptide was normal. This uh, VLS E1 is borderline, and here P28 is positive, and so on. So we've got one, two, three, four pieces that are positive. One, two, three, was there one up here? Four that were borderline, none under IgM. And then the overall um, Center for Disease Control or Infectious Disease Society of America Lyme criteria was not met. Therefore, the test is negative for IgM and it's negative for IgG. So the CDC and the Infectious Disease Society of America would say this person doesn't have Lyme. The alternative Lyme criteria, however, were positive. So this in the context of the proper history uh, signs and symptoms, physical exam, et cetera, would be indicative of Lyme in my opinion. Now, the IDSA would say, no, it isn't. Uh, the um, in International Lyme and Associated Disease Society has a different idea about what chronic Lyme is. So then for each thing that is positive, there's a comment. So a comment about each of these um, antigens that were positive. Then we look for um, a different Borrelia species here. And um, this is found, um, you know, really a lot in Wisconsin, Minnesota. The black legged tick or deer tick um, carries this thing. And uh, here we found this by IgG serology. Um, down here we find. Um, more Borrelia species. Um, we're finding bits and pieces of this bug. This one, this BMPA was positive by IgG criteria. We come down here and we find this different species of Borrelia uh, borderline positive, this, um, this particular antigen. Another um, Borrelia species is not found in this sample. Yet another Borrelia species not found in this sample. Um, then all the PCR for all of the various Borrelia species, none detected in this case. Now, think about this. The PCR not detected for Borrelia burgdorferi, but if we go all the way back to the top of this test, way up here to um, Borrelia burgdorferi, we have one, two, three, four reds and one, two, three, four um, yellows under IgG. So, you know, if you just looked with PCR, you would think it was negative. If you just thought about the um, CDC criteria, you would say it was negative. But it appears that a lot of people with um, um, Lyme disease appear to have those things, and I skipped down too far. Okay, so here's our Lyme PCRs. So now we look at um, tick-borne relapsing fever. So a slightly different illness from Lyme disease, but nonetheless related. So different bacterium uh, do this, different Borrelia species. We looked at several of them, and in this case, they're all negative. Um, another Borrelia species, still negative. And then other species going beyond the uh, relapsing fever. Here are um, uh, several different uh, Borrelia species. And in this sample, all negative. You know, your sample may be different. The PCR for all of these various, none detected. And then we look at Babesia. So Babesia, you know, half of people or more than half of people with Lyme disease appear to have some hitchhiking co-infection. In other words, these ticks seem to carry more than one bacteria when they're infected. So here's Babesia, and we look for this particular species of Borrelia, didn't find it. We look at another species of, excuse me, not Borrelia, uh, Babesia. We don't find that. Uh, uh, yet another, and we find some evidence that this particular Bartonella, so this is a different um, co-infection, Bartonella, we find some markers that it may be present. They're yellow, not red. So in the context of a good medical history, signs and symptoms, physical exam, et cetera, we expect that this may be a problem. 
uh, some more Bartonella, not present. And um, here's Bartonella, uh, yet another um, subspecies or species. And again, and then under PCR, you'll remember from up here on him, uh, hell, here we go. We do not see, um, we see just yellows here, right? So borderline criteria for whether or not it's even present. When we come down to the PCRs and we detected the DNA of this bacterium in the blood. So again, you have to look at these bugs from different directions, from different technologies, from different methodologies to get a complete picture of what's really happening. Here is, um, uh, I guess I should have looked here. This is HGA, so human granulocytic anaplasmosis. And as one of my patients like to say, holy Batman, that's a big word. But anyway, uh, HGA. So here is an HGA and the various antigens on serology, the PCR, all negative. Here is another um, human monocyte ehrlichiosis. So this is a specific kind. The, here's this species. And then we look at rickettsia. Rickettsia is another possible co-infection. And we're not seeing it on serology, but lo and behold, here it is uh, detected by PCR. Powassa virus. Powassan virus, Powassan virus uh, is a virus that can cause symptoms similar to Lyme in many cases, and we're not seeing it in this case. Uh, the PCR was also negative. We look for tick-borne encephalitis virus. Not all things are Borrelia burgdorferi or other Borrelia species. Sometimes it's a virus, in this case called tick-borne encephalitis virus, and it can cause symptoms that can mimic Lyme, so we look for it. We don't see it on serology, but we see it on PCR. West Nile virus, another virus that can cause symptoms similar to Lyme. So we look for it. Um, we're not finding it here. The PCR, we didn't find it again. Um, Chlamydia pneumoniae is a bacterium that can be very hard to treat, can also result in uh, symptoms very similar to Lyme. So we look for it. And we're not finding it in this case. Coxsackie virus, another. Now, when we get into some of these, like Coxsackie and Epstein-Barr and others, these are viruses that you can contract as a young person, and they can stay in your body forever. And with immune suppression, they can bloom. So sometimes they're not the primary problem. They're the result of the primary problem. But they can be like a smoking gun. If you have a whole bunch of viruses blooming up, whether it's herpes simplex one, two, six, whatever, or Coxsackie or Epstein-Barr cytomegalovirus. Sometimes we think, oh, well, something's going on with your immune system, we should dig deeper. So that's why we look for these. So cytomegalovirus, in this case, we didn't find it. Or sorry, Coxsackie virus, in this case, we didn't find it. Mycoplasma pneumonia is a bacteria, it can be quite hard to treat um, sometimes. And so we wanna look for that because it can also give chronic illness, Lyme-like chronic illness. Didn't detect it on this sample. Cytomegalovirus, we talked about, we looked for a bunch of antigens against that. We found two that were one borderline and one positive. We have to wonder if there is an exposure. Uh, Epstein-Barr virus, I talked about previously. Um, it, you get infected at an early age, it stays in you. And when you're immunosuppressed or otherwise challenged, it can bloom. Not in this patient, however. Uh, parvovirus B19, another thing that can cause arthritis and rash and other systemic illness. So it can mimic Lyme. So we want to look for it. Here we are. Um, yet another bug, toxoplasma. Um, we're looking for it here because, again, it can mimic Lyme. We're not detecting it. Herpes simplex 1, herpes simplex 2, herpes simplex 6, <clears throat> herpes simplex 7. We look for all of them in this sample. We didn't find it. So then there's a related but very different uh, disease complex called PANDAS, Pediatric Autoimmune Neuropsychiatric Disorder Associated with streptococcal infection, PANDAS. 
So we look for streptococcal A. Now there's a related um, thing to this called PANDA without the associate or just PANDA without the AS. So it without being associated with streptococcal infection. So PANDAs is one issue. PANDA is another issue. Uh, there's no real marker for PANDA, but we are looking for PANDAs and we don't find it in this individual. Then there are all the citations. There are 77 citations on this particular report, all the way down here. These are all uh, the references to the medical literature validating this test. Mm -hmm. Risks and limitations come next. No test is perfect, but this lab is um, certified um, by several bodies and um, runs controls regularly. Any test can have a false negative or a false positive but this test is very, very good. So um, two different technologies, um, serology, using, looking for both IgG and IgM on a very sensitive platform called a silicon chip using um, chemoluminescence, which is much more sensitive than other ways of um, identifying these antigens, and then also PCR. So again, serology is your body's response to the bug. PCR is looking for the DNA of the bug, a direct test of the bug. So this is my, generally speaking, my first look test to um, get a deep understanding of what bugs may be present. We'll do videos on other tests I do in the near future, and uh, also on functional medicine tests that give us an understanding of how your body may be predisposed to becoming ill with Lyme and or how the illness itself has caused metabolic disruption that is helping you stay susceptible and keeping you sick. All right, until next time.